everybody, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Book of Demons. So, another game, the Steam Sale recommended, it looked fantastic. I've never played it or seen anyone play it, and so this is a brand new foray into this, but, you know, usually Steam's recommendations with roguelikes, card games, RPGs are spot on. So, the sale was good. The game looked cool, and let's dive into this. So I'm gonna click, and it looks like, you know, there's Book of Demons, there's Hell Card, and then there's another book over here called Book of Aliens, and these must be other games that I just don't have. So let's do The Book of Demons. Ah, The Book of Demons. Yes. A truly grim story in our collection, mm. not for the faint of heart. A wandering hero returns home, only to find everything different than remembered. Oh. A horrendous evil rose from the depths of hell, to pop devoured up book. the brave and poisoned the living with despair. For in the depths of a place once holy, a dark ritual is concluded. Mm. Oh. Awoken. Adventure. Darkness. Horrors. All of these await below. Good luck. <laughs> Cool. There are many healing cards other than healing potion. Choose the one that suit you best. Okay, so there must be cards. Actually, now that I think about it, if I'm remembering the game that I looked at correctly, because I bought a few games on Steam sale that all look good and playing them at different times here. I think this one was like almost like a Diablo kind of ARPG, but with a unique card based attack system, but we'll have to figure that out. So, number one, I like the art style. I like the folded paper presentation. I was huge fan of the Super Mario RPG origami game for the Switch, and this kind of gives you that feel, but much darker. And secondly, if you ever open a pop-up book and there's lava and a demon inside, you have opened the wrong book. It's time to select another one from the shelf. All right, so we can collect, select our character, and it can be... Um, it looks like there's a rogue or a ranger and a wizard, um, but you need to reach level 5 with the warrior to unlock. And it does tell you that it takes about 20 minutes to get these other classes. And that's cool that it just kind of esti estimates that for you. Looks like the warrior is going to be, um, our, uh, you know, basic tank that we learned to game with. And let's just create this character. Play as a warrior. A mighty adventurer that believes in the brute power of steel. He is proficient in all kinds of weapons and armors. You can sometimes spot a little madness in his eyes when he is charging a large group of monsters. <laughs> nice. He's a little crazy. And um, I named my profile Dr. Incompetent. This guy wants to be called Kadal. I think I'll still just, you know, keep up with this if I can. And it looks like we get a, um, a card called Shadow Sword. Grants an extra attack against additional opponent in range. Um, this must be a, a game developed in translation. There are some small grammatical issues. It's fine. Um, throws toxic bombs around you that poison monsters, damaging them over time. Okay. And Mighty Blow deals massive damage and stuns a single enemy. All right, fantastic. I don't know what that means. Um, 
I don't know what the bottom of the card means, but we'll figure it all out. Let's do this. Okay, so select game mode. Casual is a balanced blend of fun and challenge. Start here if you don't know what to choose. Cards drop in a random order that allow you to counter enemies' abilities. Can get challenging during the main campaign. You can change the mode to casual at any time. First death leaderboard eligible. Speed run to cook leaderboard eligible. If you play on... Oh, this is normal. Um, I, I'm sorry. For some reason I thought... Anyway, this is the normal mode that I looked at. Uh, it can get challenging. Casual is... If you prefer a more relaxed play. And roguelike is designed to be impossible to beat without exceptional skills and luck. Totally random card drop order. Limited healing. Resurrection and healing in town costs increased amount of gold. Without gold to resurrect, character dies permanently. This game mode can't be changed during the game. And then super hot mode. Um, time moves only when you move. Super hot mode together with its iconic white and red filter can be both enabled um, or disabled later in options. Huh. All right, I don't know what that means. Um, I think roguelike sounds really, really fun. I love roguelikes. I like permadeath to play later on. But as I'm just learning the game, I think I should start with normal. And I'll do that. And maybe, you know, once I understand it better, try something like roguelike to mix it up. Uh, impossible without exceptional skills and luck seems like something I don't possess. So let's just do normal and see what this is all about. Oh, it is Diablo. I mean, in the in the sense that I have a, an inventory and a UI that looks very much like Diablo. Action bar for skills, mana, health. Uh, but man, the art style is really fun for this game. The orb contains your hearts. Once you lose all hearts, you die. So pay attention. I've got ten of those. Mana contains your blue, diamonds, and green mana. Interesting. Blue mana. Casting spells costs blue mana. There are many ways to replenish it. Fountains, potions, artifact cards, etc. Green mana. Equipping artifact cards converts blue mana to green mana. Green mana can't be used for casting, but it will change from green to blue once you unequip the artifact cards. Huh. So... Maybe it means like it, it takes mana from your pool to equip artifacts. So if your ceiling, for example, is five and you equip in an artifact that changes one of your mana into green, then now you only have four mana to cast spells with. At least that's how I seem to understand that. Character cards, panel, inventory. Um, okay, I don't have any cards and I don't have any upgrades. So there you go. Uh, okay. I have a hundred cold, no keys, and here's my character. I'm a level one novice warrior. I'm a daredevil. It hasn't died yet. Oh, okay. My current XP is zero. I need a thousand for the next level, and I get my next rank at level ten. Um, basic and expert. Oh, cool. Okay, so there's a bunch more detailed stats if I want to scroll through this and see all kinds of information about my progress but first let's talk to this lady with the wavy braids is that really you it is i'm so happy to see you after all this time fantastic it seems like it's been ages since you left our town i just wish we weren't meeting under such dire circumstances back then it was peaceful but now the town is disturbed by a demonic presence that's spreading throughout the land most of our friends are gone. Some people fled. Some took their own lives. Some have just vanished. Those who stayed have lost their minds or are too frightened to leave their houses. I'm doing my best to keep everyone's spirits up. But the truth is, we won't survive for long without help. Just don't tell anybody I said that. You must have lots of questions, but I don't have many answers. Talk to the sage if you want to know more. He might be able to help you. Okay, well, um, 
let me say, first of all, I don't know your name. Uh, I guess I should. Uh, second of all, this is about the worst news you could possibly get when returning to town. You know, like the hero usually leaves home, goes on adventures, then comes home like Odysseus. Um, and I'm coming home, and it's bad. It's real bad. But it is motivation to help these fine folk. So let's see what we can do. All right. Thank you. Um, oh, she doesn't have a name. She's the barmaid. Boy, we don't have a very good relationship. Uh, I'd like to tell you my name. And you can tell me yours. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Alright, let's close this, I guess. And let's look for... Oh, there's the sage. Hello! It's my good friend. Stay a while and listen, right? Your arrival brings hope to my old heart. Oh my god. There's no better way to forge one skill Sounds than just like property. Deckard Cain. I should know. <laughs> but I beg you not to leave. We need you here. Dark things lurk in the depths beneath the old cathedral. Is this Deckard Cain? I've seen plenty of evils in my travels, but this makes my journey through the dragon wastes look like a walk in the park. Everything started with the disappearance of our bishop. I fear he has been dragged into the catacombs deep below the church. Oh my god. I do not know what caused such desecration of that holy place. That enigma is yet to be solved. Uh, and you are the only one who can do it. Just remember to be careful. Few who have ventured into the dark made their way back. And those who did were no longer alive. What does that mean? Okay, so first of all, let me just say, I couldn't help but contain it. So this game is, you know, obviously evoking Diablo very, very, very close to being on the nose. And either this is the same voice actor that does Deckard Cain, or they got somebody and they asked them to imitate Deckard Cain as much as possible. Because, of course, it's Diablo, so you gotta talk to Deckard Cain. Um... I almost think it is. Anyway, uh, so even worse news, the bishop got dragged in here, and I don't understand this. What, what do you mean when people make their way back and they're no longer alive? How do you make your way back but not be alive? Are we talking about zombies here? Um, I hear voices in the night, and I can't sleep. Wow, that's deep, man. That's That's a bummer. This is a bummer. All right, let's let's help. I don't even know what I'm. I mean, there's birds. Oh, you can click on the the ravens. That's funny. Um, well, let's. I had a terrible dream. Oh my god, everybody's got bad dreams around here. Let's gossip it up. Um, I already did the welcome. Okay, so we got that. All right, I was just making sure I didn't miss any lore from these. Listen for a while. <laughs> it is. Okay. So they're being silly. They're mimicking Diablo intentionally and being silly. He says, stay and listen for a while instead of, stay a while and listen, as Deckard Cain says. Um, okay, cool. All right. Awesome. So you can rehear the story if you haven't played in a bit. And you can click on stuff in the environment. But let's click on this. Let's go help the bishop. Oh my, what's happening? Quest one, the cook. What is that, like the first boss in Diablo is the butcher? And then it's the anti-pope. And then we're going down, down, down. Oh my, it's Diablo in a bubble bath of flames and lava. All right, so it looks like we can see our path here. And there I am. Um, okay. Interesting. I have no idea what's happening. Um, I just click on this. Book of Demons uses mechanics different from other hack and slash games. If you're playing for the first time, pay attention to the tutorials so that you can have the best possible experience. Good luck in the paper dungeons. Thank you. All right, the dungeon's been generated. Oh, wow, look at that cool effect. I am the sword that splits darkness. That's what we are. A sword that splits darkness. Okay. Um, all right, so you can zoom out a little bit. 
can't zoom in more than this. All right, click anywhere to move. Click behind or on your character to stop. Your character will stop at intersections. Huh. Okay. So, um, I'll just click over here and my character will just automatically keep moving until an intersection. You can interact with objects in your light radius. I sure can. I got some money. Uh, let's go this way. So I'm kind of like on rails. Alright, cool. Um, interesting. Sorry to keep saying that, but I was not expecting this. Alright, there's a baddie. Am I, am I just automatically fighting that guy? Yeah, my character's just fighting him. I'm not even clicking. Um, that was not explained. Okay, what is this? Click to choose a target. Your character auto-attacks. Ah, okay. They, they auto-attack. Auto-attack is slow. Each hit damage is one heart. Click or... Click and hold on a target to attack faster. Oh, okay. I could have been attacking faster. When engaged with monsters, click and hold to retreat. Click and hold, like, run away, you mean? Because you said click and hold before. Okay, so click and hold on them to fight faster. Okay. Um, okay, so what I'm doing right now, control-wise, um, just to explain, is you don't have to actually let go of the mouse button um, or rapidly click. You can just, like they say, click and hold and just kind of drag it around, and when it's on top of an enemy, you'll attack them faster. And then... Um, I guess you click behind yourself and hold to run, but I don't really need to run, so let's go. I don't know what this means. Points of interest. Icons on the top represent points of interest. Yeah, I saw a chest up there. The icon is revealed when you're getting near. Oh, okay, so to help you understand what's happening. All right, so there's a chest, and I opened it, and I got a card that is my... Mighty Blow. Spell cards consume mana when used. Can be used only if you are targeting an enemy unit. Um, okay, so it's a spell, and it's targetable. Those are the keywords. Equip it. You can use the card by clicking it, by right-clicking it, or pressing the corresponding button on the keyboard. Oh, okay. View your cards by pressing the I or using the button in the bottom right corner, so the inventory. Rearranging cards between your card panels and slots by clicking or dragging them, or rearrange them, sorry. Only equipped cards are active. Okay, so I only have three equipped slots. Use cards and slots with right click or the zero through nine keys. To unlock more card slots, visit the Sage in town. Okay, um, you can, all right, so I have a card right here which looks like it's corresponding to the number one on the keyboard. Um, it does three damage. It's a level one common spell card. Deals massive damage and stuns the target. Requires target. Stun chance is 25%. Shockwave throws nearby monsters. Cooldown time, four seconds, and it costs one mana. Okay, um... And you don't even need to click the gold, you just can mouse over it and your character picks it up. So, um, all cards, special cards. All right, here's the card I have right here. And it's equipped. All right, let's go down. And so I just pushed one. And I guess that guy was targeted because he was the only target. And I think they outlined in red when they're targeted. And I did my mighty blow. And you can saw that he got wrecked. But my mana is down. And does it regenerate? It doesn't regenerate over time. Fountains, potions, artifacts. So maybe I want to save it. Oh, here's a fountain. Speak of the fountain. Heart points are your life. If you lose them all, you will die. Your heart points don't auto-regenerate. Use fountains and cards to recover health. You can always go back to the town and be healed by the healer. He looks nice. Okay, um, I'm just going to hold down the mouse over here and hold it down over here. I don't know for sure. I can attack these enemies when they're very, very far away. But I don't know if they have to be closer to attack me. I have not been hit yet. Alright. 
Um, Alright, we got him. Oh. Adept Bone Collector achievement unlocked. And we can talk to somebody in town. Um, oh, wow. There's a to-do list that it's giving me. Okay. And it's re reduced as I've killed the guys. Oh, and it looks like I've indeed leveled up. New gossip in town. I've leveled up. Kill monsters and gain experience points to level up. Each time you level up, all monsters lose one heart. On the screen, you mean? Or permanently? Every level gives you one point, which can be added to your hearts or used to boost your mana. I see. Okay. Um, so I leveled up. So I click this, I guess. And I can level up and um, exchange level up points for hearts to make your character withstand more damage. Exchange level up points for mana to equip more artifact cards and use more spell cards. Cauldron. After your choice, the point you didn't choose goes into the cauldron. I see. Well, I'd like to have more mana. And that went into the cauldron. Every time you turn a level up point into a heart or mana, the point of the opposite type goes into the cauldron. To collect the contents of the cauldron, talk to the barmaid. Even though you lose the prizes, dying doesn't destroy level up points in the cauldron. Okay, interesting. Does not apply to roguelike mode. Alright. I can see that the sanctity of this place has been found. Take that. Oh, look, yeah. The sanctity has been fouled. Somebody's been doing some graffiti work. Okay, we cleared the level. You can click the stairs to leave immediately. Okay. Let's let's leave immediately. Well, I could leave, but I think we're doing okay. So, the screen is telling me that we beat this level and there was a skeleton warrior. We killed everything on it. Now, on this level, we're going to encounter some skeleton warriors. It says there's a couple left. And then there's a new monster that we haven't seen yet. So let's go here. All right. And we'll go like this. And... Oh, zombie mechanics. Zombies have some other monsters. Oh, zombies and some other monsters have poisoned hearts. On death, zombies explode with a shockwave that poisons everyone around... Lethally poisoned monsters are marked with a skull. Okay. Zombies cannot be poisoned. They are healed instead. Oh, no. Well, that just changed things up. Okay. So, I definitely want to use my mighty blow on zombies and kill them as fast as possible. Exploration. Notice the footprints you leave behind. They show the direction you came from and mark the places you visited. Golden footprints mean a corridor has been fully visited. Normal footprints mean partially visited. Oh, that's nice. No footprints? You haven't been there yet. Okay, that helps you understand where to go. The minimap will help you track all the points of interest on the level. Open it with tab or scroll. Oh, okay. Yes, it will help me. Click on that. And, yep, we opened it up. We got some money. So golden footprints because this is a dead end and I've explored it. So let's go over here. And we're going to go down here. Alright, so I see this guy over here. I'm just going to kind of calmly wait for this guy to get close enough. And just drop that on him. By the way, my mana ha does not regenerate between floors. It, it stays where it was. Um, Alright, so let's blessed click on this bookshelf. Ooh, blessed be the hour. Looks like we got a new card. Oh, it's a potion. Healing potion. Rapidly regenerate heart point on use. Item cards consume charges when used. You can charge them at the fortune tellers or find charges in the dungeon. Oh, I see. So it's a times one. So I'll equip it. But it looks like... And it goes to button two on my keyboard. And it says you instantly restore 20 hearts. It's cooldown time is one. Oh, but it can get up to four charges, and it costs 100 gold to charge it. 
Okay, cool. I see. Break that. And looks like enemies are here. Oh, Helmet Hawkeye. Oh no. It's like a named enemy. Boss fights. Bosses are tough to defeat. Each one has multiple stages. The more stages a boss has, the more rewards he drops when slain. All bosses' stages are shown on the boss bar. Interesting. Before each stage, the boss is immune. He is preparing a special attack, attack and cannot be stopped. Oh. All right, so you can't interrupt them, I see. Okay, let's go over here. I did just get hit for the first time in the game. So they're coming at me, and I don't mind that. Um, I really want to just kind of clear them out one by one. I don't want to just, you know, deal with this zombie at all right now. Um, yeah, I want to kill that zombie. Have him explode. Looks like a charge. Yep, and it just adds right there times two. <laughs> they're shooting arrows at me. That's that's the boss doing that. Um, okay, so he's immune to the stun. I'm going to try to kill the skeletons that are around him at least. Oh, he makes more. All right, take that. We're on, we're on a new stage, by the way. He just keeps making zombies, so... Oh, I'm, I'm out of mana. Okay, I see. Now that's what I get for using my stuff willy-nilly. All right. So maybe, um, can I pause the game? No. All right, he's going to blow up. Run away. Any other zombies will be healed, which is bad, but it looks like it killed most of the zombies. Um, I kind of want to... Options, controls... Shift can hold... Highlight, loot, all sure. All right, interesting. Um, okay, so... I kind of want to just look at the boss stages to see if he's going to spawn more stuff, but... Looks like he only has one hit point. Okay, we killed him. Cool. All right, so we took down the boss. I really wanted to read, like, what his stages were doing, but it was too hectic. What is this? Oh, he... Oh, he gave me, like, a plus one to my health. Just by killing him. How good is that? Really good. Alright, so let's drink from the fountain. And now we're fully restored. We didn't have to use any health potions, but we are out of mana. So that's... That's not my favorite. Um, now, it tells you up here, like... If you've, um... Done everything? Now, I don't know why these footprints aren't golden... Oh, maybe because I didn't finish this yet? They should be. No icons are showing up. It says level clear, so let's go ahead and go down. Let's do it. Alright, so Dr. Incompetent has got some flex scope results. You killed every single last one of the enemies. You swept all the levels. You didn't even die once. And you defeated 10 skeletons. We got a score of a whopping 100. And we got a new avatar called the Snake. Careful, wouldn't want to bite off my own tail. Okay, nice. Okay. Oh, and then our score increased significantly. Uh, we're going for a lemming. Nice. Okay. Um, heroes to-do list. I like that they give you this to-do list. Um, restore health and mana to visit the healer. Gotta go there. Need my mana. Purchase cauldron contents. Nothing to do with the sage. And we can charge our potion at the fortune teller. Let's visit the town and do this stuff. Okay. So, uh, let's... Well, everybody wants to talk to me. Um... Let's talk to the fortune teller. Greetings, traveler. People call me the fortune teller. I see. I'm pleased to see there are souls courageous enough to visit a place like this and stay. Yep. In truth, I came here recently myself, <clears throat> as I had to leave the royal capital. I'm sure. I am certain you have already heard about me and my excellent skills from the lovely barmaid I'm tutoring. Nope. Believe me when I say you will find my craft most useful in your adventures. Mm. 
Feel free to talk to me should you need any assistance. The townsfolk are good but simple people and know little about the arcane. That sage may be an exception, but his wit, not to mention his social skills, are clearly dulled by age. <laughs> We're all lucky that cranky old men tend to be harmless. Yes, we are. Okay, cool. I do have to say that um, I think the voice acting in this game is quite good. Cards are my specialty. They represent a novel approach to magic, offering a superior alternative to clunky weaponry and verbose spellcasting. I see. Unfortunately, new things are often frowned upon, even more so in quaint places like this town. Can you imagine not so long ago those people traded with a local blacksmith? This is so Middle Ages. <laughs> no wonder he went bankrupt. Nice. But let's get back to business. Cards are universal magical items which can manifest properties of weapons, spells, and other artifacts. Some consume magical essence once used, but they can be recharged using objects found in the dungeons or with my help at a reasonable price. I'm sure it's going to be reasonable. Just like with playing cards, the trick is to find the right combination of magical properties that gives you the best advantage. I see. All right. Um, Uh-oh. She says that she can see my future is very grim. That's not good. Um, well, I can charge a card, health potion, and I have a thousand gold, and it'll cost me a um, hundred to charge it. I'm only going to charge it once, because I have a feeling I might find one um, in the dungeon, and then I, I don't want to waste it. I don't know if that's possible, but... What's this green exclamation oh, point? I can see your future is very grim. I already did the gossip with you. Maybe it's just that, that I could go there and charge my card further. Thank the heavens for hearing my prayers and sending us a champion of light. I shall aid you in your struggle to the best of my limited abilities. Okay. Come to me should you need remedies for ailments of body or soul. Yet you should remember it is no small task to face the legions of evil. You must shield yourself with faith. Okay. There is no better protection against darkness. If you allow yourself to falter, you shall become defenseless and even risk losing your immortal soul. That's bad. I saw what happened to those who went astray in their spiritual vocation and... Uh, no... It's better not to dwell on such things, lest darkness overcome us. Hmm. Okay. Um, death rage. And it's 100,000 gold. Okay, I don't have that. So, I actually don't need to use his services. I don't know what did it, but I just coming back to the town, I seem to have restored to full without really doing much at all, of anything. I've been busy too while you were away. The fortune teller is teaching me her craft, and I don't mean her skill with guards. It's called prize brewing, what? and it's the art of producing powerful magical elixirs that someone like you should find useful. Oh, cool. All you need to do is collect the ingredients. I'll take care of the rest. Okay. Now, this is the magical stuff I'm talking about, so there are some rules. First, the more ingredients I mix, the greater the potion's power will be. Second, okay. you can drink it and enjoy a little magic any time you want, but the process will get more expensive each time. Hmm. Third, if monsters slay you in the dungeons, the potion will weaken. It's because I'm making them just for you, so they have to be magically linked to your essence. Okay. I don't think I understand that, but okay, Mo magical cauldron. Um, collect prizes cost 500 gold do it um do you wish to collect the cauldron prizes now or wait longer and risk losing the bonus each time you collect prizes the price of the cauldron increases 
when the hero dies, unbought prizes, or lost. But I don't... She means it's stronger... If I save it up, but I shouldn't? I, I don't understand why I wouldn't want to do this. Um... Oh, each time you collect it, the price goes up. So if I would... I, I understand. Whoops. Okay. So if I wait, I get a more economical return because each time you do it, the price goes up. So if you do it like every time you come back, every time you collect points, then it's going to cost a lot. The, the price will go up. But the, the consequence is if you die, you're going to lose stuff. So I understand what you're saying. I'm going to take it. We got an achievement, and it did, so it's like we just get the level up bonus that we missed, um, basically. So that's kind of cool. So now I got an extra hit point and some mana. You know, I think there's a good argument for not doing what I did, but I even early in the game sometimes when there's a, a new game like this for myself, I like to be prepared because I could easily die not understanding how difficult an enemy is um, or the controls or something and I don't want to just lose out on that permanently so that's that's my choice well now I guess it's time to go back down and keep going further and getting more cards leveling up making more progress and trying to save the town um, and we will get into that next time I think this is a great place to end the episode I think we've uh, got into the story of the game, the atmosphere, and done enough of the play pattern in the loop to see the mechanics, the way the game unfolds, and I'm so curious what you all think. Right now, my opinion of the game is very high. I think it's an interesting take on the ARPG. I love the style of it. I like the music, the voice acting, um, and it seems pretty fun at the moment. Um, there, It's a little bit not wonky, that's not the right word. I have to master the controls and the timing and the spacing to feel more comfortable. Um, but at the same time, that will just come with, with play. So overall, I'm glad I picked this up. I, uh, like I said, am eager to hear what you all think. If you've played this game before, let me know what you think. Let me know how it goes, um, if roguelike mode is fun or not. And um, if you haven't played this game, what do you think so far? What are your impressions? What are your thoughts? Any questions you have? Put those in the comments below, please. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like. It helps out the channel so much. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And if you're feeling generous this holiday season, there are links in the description below for becoming a channel member or a patron. And that helps me so much uh, afford to keep going and taking time to make content Everyone, I hope you have an excellent evening or day. Thank you so much again for watching. Take care.